Welcome to my lab. I'm Drew Collip. In today's lab, we're going to perform a serial dilution down to a desired concentration and volume of cells. We've subcultured our BHK cells and saved the cells in the SnapCap test tube. In a lecture several weeks ago, I asked the students to call out three numbers. The three numbers they called out were four, five, six. So I'll be diluting these cells down to 4.56 times 10 to the three cells per mil. Let's start by counting our cells using the Coulter counter. We'll prepare our blank and our sample by loading 20 mils of our isotone solution into each of the cups. When doing this, make sure you do not introduce bubbles as the Coulter counter does not count cells, it counts particles. Any bubbles that go through will be counted as cells and your reading will be off. I will now add 200 microliters of my sample of cells using a P200. As a result, my dilution factor will be 101 over 1. Before you sample the BHK cells, make sure you mix them thoroughly. Remember, the cells aren't dissolved, they're suspended in solution. They'll eventually sink to the bottom. Mix it and pull out 200 microliters. We'll now count the cells on the Coulter counter. We'll start by washing the probe with distilled water. We're using the beaker to capture the water so it doesn't make a mess in the machine. We'll then run the blank three times to get an idea of what the background noise is from the probe itself. Press the start button. The machine will drop half a mil of the solution and count how many particles are in that solution. You can see the zero there. This number will change over time. We have one particle, two, three, three particles. I'll record that in my lab notebook. I will then do this two more times and average the three blanks. Five is our count. In a previous class, a student suggested that as we count the cells, the numbers go up all the time. That is not the case. The student discovered that when they tried to count their cells on the Coulter counter. Here we have 10. Again, it looks like the numbers are going up, but that is just in this situation here. Now we've run the three blanks. We're going to run our three samples. I will not rinse the probe in between, but I will make sure I gently mix the sample so that I get a true sample from the solution. Remember, the cells sink to the bottom because they're not dissolved, they're suspended. Load the sample in. We'll count this three times. Every time the Coulter counter registers 1,000 particles, it makes a little beeping sound. You'll see that there. As you can see, this number is much larger than the blank. Six thousand six hundred eighty-four. Record that in our lab notebook and run it two more times. Six thousand five hundred sixty nine. 
6,852. Let's now remove the sample and wash the probe. We're going to run this again, so let's give the probe and the samples time between the runs. So again, when we're done, we'll rinse the probe with distilled water the same way we started with. Cells on the outside should be gone. And then we'll rinse the inside by running the blank one time. The blank should contain no cells inside. In my lab, I like this number to be below 50. If you get above 50, run it again. If it's still above 50, change out for fresh solution. We got a count of 34, well below the 50. Now in my lab, there's a log on top of each of the colder counters. You put your name, the date, the time, and the final count. This way we ensure that everyone has cleaned the probe when they are done. We'll put the cup back in with some isotone. Remember the probe must be kept wet at all times. I'll then take this over to the sink. There's a very small volume of cells in here. I'm just going to rinse it out with some water. Rinse the caps as well. I'm going to use these again for my second counts after my cereal dilution. So I'll leave them open to dry slightly. Let's now do our calculations. Let's do our average blank. 3 plus 5 plus 10 is 18. 18 divided by 3 is 6. Now our average sample. 6684 plus 6569 plus 6852. 20,105 divided by 3. 6,701.66666. Please do not round off until the final answer. We'll now calculate the concentration. Our average sample minus our average blank. This will represent cells. We divide by 0.5 mils, the volume drawn into the machine every run. And our dilution factor was 101. It's 101 because we added 0.2 mils of cells in 20 mils of solution. Work it all out. 1,352,524.6 repeating. We'll round that off to three significant digits. 1.35 times 10 to the sixth cells per mil. Make sure you include your units. So this is where our cells are starting off. We're going to dilute it down to 4.56 times 10 to the three cells per mil. To do this, I will do a number of 1 in 10 dilutions until I get in the vicinity of where I want it to be. So this brings us down to 10 to the 5. We do another 1 in 10, 1 1.35 times 10 to the 4. This is relatively close to 4.56 times 10 to the 3. My volumes would be 1 mil of cells and 9 mils of PBS. I will use PBS as my solvent. Now that I have it in the ballpark, I will use C1 V1 equals C2 V2 to solve for my final dilution. What I want to know is how much of the 1.35 times 10 to the 4 I need, the V1. So I put down my C2, my final concentration, put down my final volume, 7 mils. I divide by the 1.35 times 10 to the 4. This will tell me the volume I need of that to create the correct dilution. Please include your units in any of your calculations. You can see cells per mil cancels out as it's on the top and the bottom, and milliliters is left. I've calculated 2.364 is repeating is what I get. We we'll round that off to 2.36 mils of cells. We subtract that away from seven mils, and we have remaining 4.64 milliliters of my PBS. One, two, Three dilutions is what I'll be doing here. Before we get started, let's review the calculations one more time. So you can see we require seven mils of a 4.56 times 10 to the three cells per mil solution. 
When I counted my cells, I determined there was 1.35 times 10 to the 6 cells per mil. The way I do my serial dilutions is I always do 1 in 10s until I get in the vicinity of where the final concentration will be. If 1 in 10s is too much, I could always do a 1 in 5, a 1 in 2, but I never go larger than 1 in 10. You can see I've written down here not only how much solvent I need, that's the PBS, but how much solute I need, that's the cells or the previous solution. I'm doing two 1 in 10 dilutions. 1.35 times 10 to the 4 is pretty close to 4.56 times 10 to the 3. I then use my C1V1 equals C2V2 or C1V1 equals CFVF. They're the same formulas. And I'm looking for V1. So C2V2, that's my final concentration and my final volume. C1, that's the concentration of the tube just before this one. This would be my second dilution in my serial dilution. When I do all the calculations, you can see units cancel out and I determine I need 2.36 mils of my solution 2, we'll call that cells, and I need 4.64 mils of PBS, my solvent. If I add those together, it should give me 7 mils. So here is the game plan for how we're going to do this dilution. You can see not only the concentrations in each as we move along, but also the volumes of both the solute and the solvent. Please note, I'm doing this dilution outside of the biosafety cabinet. As a result, these cells will be contaminated and cannot be used further for experimentation. If I was doing this in the real world, what I would do is I would have one main test tube remaining in the biosafety cabinet. I would make sure it's mixed thoroughly and I would take a small aliquot of that. I would bring that out of the hood and count that in the Coulter counter. As long as the sample that you took was fully mixed, the concentration in the tube you counted should be the same as the concentration in the tube remaining in the biosafety cabinet. I would then go back to the biosafety cabinet that is sterile and I would do my serial dilution there. If you wanted to count them at the end, you could take a small aliquot in another test tube and count it in the Coulter counter. But you would never remove the cells from the biosafety cabinet, open it outside, and then place it back inside and use those cells for an experiment. They would be contaminated and cannot be used in the lab. For the purposes of this experiment, we're only practicing our serial dilutions. So when we're done, we will throw all the cells away after we bleach them. Let's now perform the serial dilution. I've prepared three test tubes, labeled them one, two, and three, to represent the three dilutions I'm going to be doing in my serial dilution. I will start by adding the solvent to all three of them. Get my pipette controller, and I'm going to add nine mils to both tube one and tube two. I'm using a solution of PBS that I will not use back in the hood because I'm opening it outside the hood. Take your time. Nine mils of PBS. Add that into the test tube. Now, because I'm using the solvent here, I will reuse this pipette and add another nine mils. I will not do this moving forward for the cells. Again, nine mils of PBS. For tube number three, I'm going to load in 4.64 mils of PBS. To do that, I'm going to use a smaller pipette, a five mil pipette. The four and the six, no problem getting that. The last four will be some guesswork. So 4.6 and somewhere between the six and the seven there. Make sure you're at eye level. Load that into tube number three. Okay, we have all of our solvent loaded into the three tubes. Now we're going to do our dilution with our cells. I'm going to lower the speed on my pipette controller as I'm going to be using a two mil pipette for this. The diameter is very small, so the fluid moves up and down very quickly. That's why I reduce the speed of my pipette controller. I take my initial sample of cells, make sure it's thoroughly mixed. I'm going to take one mil. Make sure you take your time with this. 
every time you transfer one of these solutions, whether it be a solute or a solvent, if you make a mistake, there's no way in the end you'll get the right concentration. Now I use 10 and 5 mil pipettes all the time. I don't generally use the 2 mil pipettes. As you can see from this, it's going to take me some time to get this right. But I want you to take your time. Wasn't happy with that one. So I'm going to go back. Going to make sure it's done right. Bring the volume well above the one mil mark and then bring it down to that one mil line. I'm happy with that now. Transfer that into my test tube. Pipe it up and down. Now when doing my cells, I make sure I mix it. And I'm not going to reuse this pipette. I'm going to get another 2 mil pipette. Cells could be on the outside and they could add additional concentration of cells to your next tube. Again, before we sample it, we make sure it's thoroughly mixed. I'm going to take 1 mil from this one as well. So this is tube number 2 we're going to be loading. 9 mils PBS, 1 mil of our cells. Tube number two is now done. Now we have our final tube, tube number three. I'm going to take 2.36 mils. The two and the three, no problem. The last number six will be a guess, somewhere between the uh, 0.3 and 0.4. Again, make sure we mix it thoroughly. We're taking from tube number two. Two, point one, two, three, six, somewhere between there. There we go. Looks good. Transfer that in. Pipe it up and down. And the zero dilution is now complete. Now we'll count it and see how we did. If you look at it, you can see a slight progression between them. You don't really see it well in the video, but uh, it goes very pink down to clear at the end in tube number three. We're going to count tube number three. That would be our final dilution. Again, we're going to load 20 mils of our isotone solution into our two cups, one labeled blank and one labeled sample. Now, because this is a very dilute solution, this is actually a very challenging dilution. I will not ask you on the lab practical to go below 10 to the 4. This is below 10 to the 4. So to improve upon my counts, I'm going to load in not 0.2 mils, but 1 mil of cells. So we're loading 1 mil of cells into 20 mils of isoflow. That's 1 over 21 is our dilution. So our dilution factor in this case will be 21 over 1. Before I sample, I thoroughly mix it. Again, I'm taking 1 mil this time. Why? Because this is a very dilute solution. We have our sample, we have our blank. Let's now count them. What I'm shooting for is to be within 10% of my desired final concentration. As I stated, this is a very challenging dilution. I'll be surprised if I get below 10%. We'll wash the probe with distilled water and we'll run our blank three times. Ideally, when you do your counts, the three values are very close to each other. Here we have a count of 10.
13. And 14. Pretty tight data. Let's now run our sample. Remove the blank. We do not rinse the probe in between, but we make sure we gently mix the sample to make sure it's a true sample of this entire solution. Run this three times now. Remember, this is very diluted, so the numbers should be quite low. 151. This is with a dilution of 1 over 21. Imagine if we had done 1 over 101, how low those numbers would be. One hundred twenty-five. Not as close as I would like them, but your data is your data. Hopefully the next number is in between the two. One thirty-six. Not bad. Let's take our averages. 10 plus 13 plus 14. 37. Divide by 3. 12.3 repeating. Remember, don't round off until the final answer. 151 plus 125 plus 136. 412. Divide by 3. 137.3 repeating. Calculate the concentration. Average sample minus average blank. This represents the number of cells. Divide by 0.5 mils, the volume drawn into the machine. And remember, dilution factor now is 21 because we loaded one mil of our sample in. Five thousand two hundred fifty. Put in scientific notation to three significant digits. 5.25 times 10 to the 3 cells per mil. We're pretty close, but a bit off. Let's see what our percent error is. I would like it to be within 10%. So we take our measured value, subtract away our desired value. We then divide by... Yes, now we have it. We divide by our desired value. Common mistake there. Again, I'm looking to be within 10% error. 100 by 100 to make it as a percentage. 15.1%. So, outside my 10%, I said this was a challenging one, so even I have room for improvement. I'm always looking to troubleshoot my experiments. Let's see what our average sample should have been to get 0% error. So we take the concentration we wanted, 4.56 times 10 to the 3. We will then divide by 21 and multiply by 0.5. I then subtract away my average blank, 12.33. And 120.9 is what I should have got to get 0% error. I got 137.3. Now notice the samples are a bit off. Let's remove the 151 and see what we get. If we just took, got rid of the 151 sample and we averaged the 125 and 136, what would our percent error be? 8.8% error. 
Now, I'm not going to delete that 151, but I'm just trying to show you the importance of having tight data. 125 and 137 and 151. They're not as tight as I would like them to be. But again, like I said, your data is your data. Let's clean up our Coulter counter, rinse the probe with distilled water, and then run the blank one time. Again, must be below 50. Twelve, well below fifty. Record that down on the sheet. That's why it's good to put your cap on right away. You can see I dropped the cup, but nothing spilt because the cap was on. Take these back, give them a good rinse. Now, as I said, 4.56 times 10 to the 3 was a very challenging dilution. It's a very low concentration, and any deviation in your samples can lead to vast changes in your percent error. Just out of interest's sake, I'm going to run sample number 2, dilution number 2, and see how I did with that one. It was 1.35 times 10 to the 4. Remember what I said. When I ask you to do this for your assessment, I will not be asking you for a concentration below times 10 to the 4. Let's just see what sample number 2 looked like. Again, it's quite a dilute solution, so instead of loading in 0.2 mils, I'm going to load in 1 mil. Make sure you mix it before you sample. So by adding in 1 mil, my dilution factor will be 21. Clean the probe. Run the blank three times. We get 10 for our first count. Twenty seven for our second count. And fifteen for our third count. Run our sample now. Make sure you gently mix it before you put it in the coulter counter. When you do mix it, make sure you don't include bubbles.
356 is our first sample. Hopefully I get some tighter data here. Three thirty seven. Sorry for the motion of the camera, it's strapped to my chest and that's my breathing. <laughs> Three seventy seven. Not the tightest data, but again, my data is my data. Let's see how I did. Ten plus twenty seven plus fifteen. Fifty two. Take the average by dividing by three. Seventeen point three repeating. Remember, do not round off until the final answer. Three fifty six plus three thirty seven plus three seventy seven. Ten seventy divided by three to get the average. 356.6 repeating. Calculate the concentration. We take the average sample minus the average blank. This will represent number of cells. Divide by 0.5 mils because that's how much volume is drawn into the machine at every run. And we're doing a 21 dilution, not 101. Remember what I'm shooting for is 1.35 times 10 to the 4. We got 1.43 times 10 to the 4. Not exactly the same, but we'll see how close it is when we do our percent error calculation. 1.35 times 10 to the 4. Divide by 1.35 times 10 to the 4. Multiply by 100%, as this is a percentage. Subtract what I wanted, divide by what I wanted, multiply by 100. 5.6%. Well within the 10%. As I said, going below times 10 to the 4 for cell concentration is quite challenging, and I will not be asking you to do that. When you're done, make sure you clean up your coulter counter by rinsing with water and running your blank one time. Ensure that you have below 50 for your last count with your blank, and record that on the log sheet on top of the Coulter counter. So in today's lab, we took some cells that were subcultured. We determined what their concentration was. We had a predetermined final concentration and final volume. We then did a serial dilution. This is more than one dilution, one after the other. We performed this dilution, and I wanted to be within 10% of what the required solution was. I got pretty close, but again, going below times 10 to the 4 is quite a challenging dilution. Hopefully you've learned how to do this. You'll have the opportunity to practice this in the lab this semester. Your final practical exam will be subculturing and then performing this serial dilution. That's all for today. We'll see you in the lab.